Hi everyone, um, my name is Faith and you are welcome to our Zoom session today. Um, I am the creator of AFM Stories, which essentially is a platform using media for YouTube development. Um, I currently have a YouTube channel which has like recordings of like previous Zoom sessions where I've interviewed past, present and definitely going to interview future scholars. Um, you could go check out the channel. I'm just going to drop the link. Um, it's youtube.com slash AFM stories. Um, just a quick backstory about me. Um, I'm a 2020 traveling scholar who's very passionate about making um, scholarship winners out of like other people. And I do this by YouTube videos, live Zoom sessions like this with like other scholarship winners. So from Commonwealth, to mastercard to now roads and many more our guest today is really really amazing her name is bulu ikune i hope i got your name right bulu <laughs> um but she is literally an amazing person like um she she's you know how, we all know how prestigious road scholarship is we all know how competitive it is and for someone to be among the final two people selected i'm sure that you must be aware that this person is like really 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 dedicated and has a really strong profile but beyond that obviously she has been able to master a strategy for her to be able to you know um become successful at the scholarship and so all the things that helped her from the application process to the different stages she's going to be sharing all of it with us um writing essays and references and everything you need to know in case you're interested in the Rhodes scholarship so um yeah so bolo how are you today and <laughs> please turn on your video <laughs> <laughs> hello faith hi everyone i'm doing good thank you thank you for having me it's a real pleasure to be here it's a real pleasure to have you as well you're looking so good i love your hair it's really fun thank you yeah, thank you <laughs> <laughs> really like the five medical doctors that slay. Thank you so much. It's beautiful, and um, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so you see that because people tend to think that scholars have to look a certain kind of way or be a certain kind of way, but I think winning a scholarship is more about what you have on the inside and how much work you're willing to put into it. So my mm -hmm. first question for you is: Definitely. Do you think that anybody can win the Rhodes Scholarship? Yeah, so you asked me a very deep question. <laughs> Can anybody, anybody, absolutely anybody win the Rhodes Scholarship? Well, I wouldn't say anybody, right? Because anybody is very broad because, you know, they have, they do have very strict criteria. So it won't be accurate to say everybody or anybody. I would like to, you know, motivate and inspire people to um, apply for the scholarship or saying anybody would be a stretch. So. <laughs> they have strict criteria and one of the factors that tends to displace a lot of people or discourage a lot of applicants is the fact that for you know the academic excellence part you have to have graduated with a first class honors if you are in a, you know a cgpa category and if you're a doctor or in categories where we don't use cgpa for assessment then you have to have had a distinction during your school years so that in its own it's quite selective in that aspect because if you haven't had a distinction in medical school for example on my part then you can't even apply to the scholarship or your application will not even be considered because there are places where you have to select you know what you graduated with and you know your your academic criteria at that point in time so not everybody and not anybody can apply at that point so that cuts off a lot of people in the first place so you've never seen anyone that did not have this grade or you've never heard of anyone that did not have this grade get it like they are 100 percent strict on that there's no way around it because some scholarships they'll yeah. say that oh yeah if you don't have a first class maybe you need to supplement it with like publications or experience but this one strictly needs people with a strong academic background is that what you're saying that is that is the criteria that's just the way it there's is no way around they it. say <laughs> they say must must have had so and so i don't know of anybody that 
has applied without finishing. I'm not even sure people would tend to apply knowing that that category itself is very strict. Yeah, I get you. So um, I'm quite curious about your journey before you got the scholarship. So uh, what were you into? What were you doing? What was your life like? And then what inspired you to say, okay, this prestigious scholarship, I want to apply for it. I'm going for it. And that's that. (laughs) So I I first heard about the scholarship in medical school. That was when... Um, Dr. Tolu Alashe Awayemi won it. That it was in 2017. He was my senior in school, so I just I heard about it vaguely. And you know, Lashe is somebody that is a, is a super guy. He's a genius, basically. So when I heard about it, I was like, oh, okay, what's this Rhodes Scholarship all about? So I did check it up at that point, and. At this point, I kind of cancelled myself because I knew or I read that you had to have had a distinction to apply. And in 2017, I hadn't had any and it was things were looking bleak, actually. (laughs) It wasn't looking very promising because, you know, I was almost done with medical school at that point in time. So in um, 2019, when I did have a distinction in psychiatry, it didn't really sink in that, oh, wait, uh, there's the root scholarship. Maybe you could apply for it now at this point. So it was my friends, a couple of friends that I have that started reminding me that, oh, Bolu, you should prepare to apply to this scholarship next year. You really should. I think you should. You know, I, I feel like you would be a good fit for it. Um, at this point, I had been involved in some organizations, even from crossing over to the clinical aspect of medical school. And at this point, when I was joining them, I hadn't even um, put in mind that, okay, road scholarships and graduate school. I um, I was just joining them because I I had interest in these particular things. And one of them was um, philanthropy. I'd always been interested in philanthropy. So when I crossed to medical school, I joined um, a student-led social philanthropic organization. I'd always loved music. I liked to sing. So I also joined the classical music choir. Apart from that, I was involved in student politics, but these were things that, you know, I was interested in. I wasn't factoring in, okay, I need to, you know, apply for scholarships soon, so I need to build this, I need to build that. I was really passionate about these things. And when I went through the criteria, I started, okay, I started figuring out that, wait, I'm actually ticking the boxes, as the case may be, because they are quite, um, you know, they have four different criteria. The first was academic excellence, of which we've talked about the distinction and the first class parts. So that's apparently at that point. <laughs> distinction, <laughs> can it be like, you know, there are different levels of distinction. There is mm-hmm. distinction on the dot. There is extremely high distinction. Do they have any disparities in that? Or, or as long as you mm-hmm. have a 4.5 or a 70, you are fine. Exactly, exactly. Correct. Yes, there's no high distinction or anything like that. So it's basically a distinction or a first class. Okay. So um, the first criteria or criterion, for example, is academic excellence. We've talked about that. Then the fact that you need to have you know, shown that you have energies to use a particular talent. And that could be music, it could be wow, dancing, talent. it could be sports. So wow. yes, actually, yeah. Like they, they do enjoy you, the people that are versatile. He okay. said, Okay, wow. That, that's a new one. Yeah. So you can have some form of talent. Okay, so what examples? Music, sports? Some form, you know, exactly. Music, sports, acting, things of that nature. Wow. That's, that's the kind of thing that helps you differentiate yourself generally as an individual and when you're applying to do a scholarship. Then another one is that you should show that you have so a what talents for, did you, know, you use? Caring for others. I sing, like, oh. I, I just have to sing. I am in a, I was in a choir. Oh, okay. Funny enough, yes, actually. <laughs> during during the final interview, we had Are a dinner. I'm telling you, we had a dinner. I think the first or the second night we got to Ghana for the final interview. And someone was just like, oh, Polu, I hear you're a classical musician. Why don't you just sing something for us? And I'm like... <laughs> 
okay wow. <laughs> so it did happen but not 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 like a grade not like they were grading me or anything like that it was just something spontaneous that that we did at that point in time wow <laughs> so that's the second criteria then the third is that you need to be um, you know show that you have leadership capabilities basically yeah. so for me i told you i was involved in student politics and even in the different organizations that I had been involved in, I had taken up leadership positions after a you know, couple of months, after some time, I taken up leadership positions. So that counts for something as well. Then the last one is that you should be able to show that you have a passion for caring for the weak, the less privileged, something that shows that you know you are kind-hearted, you are compassionate. And for me, apparently I had been involved in philanthropy too, and volunteering, it doesn't have to be philanthropy, of course, there's volunteering for different courses, different causes, and um, you know, just stepping outside your comfort zone and caring for people apart from yourself. And I believe that this can take different forms. It doesn't have to be that you're a volunteer per se, or that you're a philanthropist or anything. It could be a particular project that you've worked on, something that just benefits your community, something that shows that you see a bigger picture at the end of the day. So that's, was like, you know, the things that I saw that I started ticking the boxes that, oh, okay, it seems like I actually do fit into the kind of person that they're looking for for the scholarship. And um, then my friend okay. also pushed me and all of that. And then, you know, that's how it basically happened. That's so cute. I, I <laughs> want to just clarify the, um, the leadership part. So for people that were not involved in like student government, um, what other ex leadership examples? So people that were not involved in student government or people that are not founders of a brand, what other leadership examples would they be willing mm -hmm. to accept? Or what other leadership examples do you well, think? Well, you know, generally, I, I would not... <clears throat> okay, okay. Not what they would yeah, be so like I said, they are not really the um, <laughs> Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the I think that, I think that oh, it's babies, right? I feel that as long as you show some form of taking up responsibility for other people, that counts. Now, um, for me, things like student tutoring, I used to tutor my classmates. Exactly. We used to have tutorial groups, things like that. And they do count. Like the fact that you are not, you know, just a member of a particular society or you're not a senator, just, you know, there are some different things that you're exposed to as a student, basically. Yeah so many things i cannot even begin to you know itemize them but the fact that you decide to go into a particular thing not only start you know working with people as a team but also deciding at some point to lead a team it doesn't have to be as a large chairman team. or the chairperson it doesn't have to be a very huge gathering in your own circle in your own sphere you can be making changes and influencing changes in your own community what specific road scholarship did you mean was it the west africa one or the south africa one i i did say that it was the west africa one but i just wanted you to confirm yes yes it's the west africa one that yeah. has to do with 18 countries all the west african countries applications yeah okay and quite related to the first thing that you said earlier um if one hasn't got a first class during your bachelor study does that mean a no hope for that person well, I wouldn't be one to dash anybody's hopes, right? But if you want to go for it, I say you do go for it. You never can say it could be that it changes over time. It could be that, you know, the criteria that you fulfill in the other ways boost really your application good. enough. Yes. So I wouldn't say don't apply because I myself, I'm not even sure that everybody here, I mean, everybody that ended up as a finalist that I got to meet had a first class. I'm not 100% sure. So I'm just stating it based on my own knowledge of the criteria, but I'm not a judge and I'm not one of the selection committee. So <laughs> I say for 100% that you should definitely not apply. You should go for it. Okay, so before we go into the application process, um, just for people that want to know, um, 
what does the scholarship cover so what are the benefits of the scholarship why should anybody hustle and spend time and energy <laughs> right because i know the process yes. is really long speaking to you mm-hmm. earlier i know that it's a lot of things but before we get into that i know that people want to know okay why should i apply for roots like how is mm-hmm. it going to help me what is the benefit of the scholarship okay first of all it's the road scholarship right <laughs> that in itself is it's already a huge bragging right for you as an individual and for whatever cause you stand up for. I mean, it's a platform that can basically skyrocket you to achieve the biggest dreams that you can possibly imagine, right? So it's the network, number one. You have access to a huge network of people that have similar goals, people that have that are vibrant also that will help you, you know, along the way, that will form part of your team when you are aspiring you know when you're going to get your goals when you are you know setting down plans these are people that will be there for you and these are people that will help you you know get to where you want to get to and of course you're studying at the university of oxford too which is one of the top universities in the world so you have access to such a great educational atmosphere for you to learn for you to boost yourself as a as a person for you to improve your knowledge base there's that and you are doing it fully funded so you don't have to worry about you know where you're getting money from you have access to number one before you leave you have access to visa charges your flight is totally covered your um, health insurance too is covered for the duration of your course however long it's going to be you have full tuition paid for however long you're also going to be a road scholar and you have a living stipend, which involves, you know, your accommodation, your feeding, you get clothing allowance or settling in allowance, what we call when you just arrive in the university for one off payment anyway. And you basically are allowed to thrive because you don't have to worry about where your next meal is coming from. You don't have to worry about how you're going to pay for your tuition or your accommodation. You just get there and you learn as much as you can. You make the connections you're supposed to make. Talk to people about you know the things that matter to you, and you don't have to stress yourself. Basically, it's giving you the best education that you can want, stress free and hassle free. So why not apply for the Rhodes Scholarship? Really? <laughs> Do they have a caveat though that like you have to return home after the scholarship? No, no. Not See, at all. another <laughs> thing, guys. <laughs> I know. Right. you must come back like come to your home country give back so it's your it, choice it's a choice for you so that's another mm-hmm. really strong reason um mm-hmm. i'm curious do they have specific schools that you have to apply to and do they have specific courses that you have also have to apply to the only school that you know is associated with the road scholarship is the university of oxford Okay. So that's the only school that you can go to when you win a road scholarship. They do have a list of courses that are um, acceptable for applying, but it's almost all the university courses in the first place. So if you check it, there's no way that you wouldn't see what you want. And in that course list, like it's practically all, all the university courses at the same time. So there's that. Okay, that's good. So let's go straight into the application process. So I want to apply for a road scholarship. What is the first thing I'm going to do? Well, it's up to you, actually. It depends on the kind of person that you are. Um, For me, I felt like the most important thing I had to do was to start reaching out to people that were going to um, get my references. I was going to get my references from. That was my utmost priority because I know that that can take a long time. (laughs) <laughs> right <laughs> but thankfully um i had been able to get my certificates and my transcripts they need you is it just academic references or professional and academic oh you need at least three academic references oh at least three okay but then ah. you can have professional you in can addition. also have you said in addition to the three academic at least three. You can have just three academic references. Oh, okay. And then, you know, go on to add one other person. At least four reference letters is what you need in all. What? Of which, <laughs> of which three have to be academic. Guys, are you taking notes? <laughs> <laughs> so okay. you need you need at least four. 
So yeah, yeah we make sure that one. that's the first thing that you did because that's a lot. Yes. Of people. Okay. So. A lot, a lot. But for most people, it will be a battle of getting their transcripts and getting their certificates ready, especially, of course, if you're in a federal university or a state university, it's that can be the most tedious of tasks because it can take months, even years to get those documents. But for my class, it just was miraculous in the fact that we were basically told, oh, come pick your transcripts before you go off for your housemanship and the rest. So I had my certificate and my transcripts even before I had planned to apply for the road scholarship for that year. So that was a great plus for me. Then I just had to start working on my reference letters and my personal statements, which so for I believe... reference letters, um, I'm trying to just let you follow a structure. Okay, so you mm-hmm. need to get certificates and transcripts. Then yes. you are working early on your reference letters. What do you mm-hmm. think the content of reference letters should be for the road scholarship? Like, uh, what, what should people's references be thinking about um what should they think about when they're trying to write a reference for someone so is it like just your academic achievements is it everything else is it all the mm-hmm. criteria how long or how short should a typical reference letter be and what's the caliber of person so must it be like a um a top lecturer or just a graduate assistant or professor or, i know i'm asking a lot of questions and i'll say go by them <laughs> but basically just talk about the reference so that before yeah. we now move on to the personal statement okay thanks so the good thing about the scholarship is that there is so much information on the websites right mm-hmm. for this particular question now they have the a pdf for candidates they have a pdf for your potential referees that you get to send to them so right. that they have a full idea of So that they have a full idea of exactly what they want. So for an academic referee, for example, they state clearly in the documents that, number one, the person does not have to be of a high ranking or somebody that is a professor or the provost, you know, for example, it doesn't have to be that way. If you can get somebody like that, fantastic, amazing. But it's all about having a referee that knows you as opposed to somebody that is a high-ranking official someone that can write and attest to your academic capability someone that can write about you like they know you you know sometimes it's difficult to get a reference that is personalized instead of just saying oh i know her and i recommend her she's great like they need exactly it has to be quite detailed so it has to be someone that actually knows you that knows what you're all about that knows what you're interested in so it's great to have interacted with some of your lecturers at least even if it's just to butter them up you know yes. <laughs> knowing <I'm> that <laughs> knowing that exactly <laughs> exactly you butter them up so they know that okay this is they take you under their wing basically it might not be very easy especially if you're not a very outgoing person but knowing that you know it's for a greater good it's for something that you're very passionate about just you know find a way of just and even if you have already graduated it's still a good time to start calling them to be saying exactly Hi, i'm working on because i feel like lecturers merry christmas <laughs> yes or i don't know go visit them give them a gift it just exactly. works because you see your references like i know that references are very important but for they are so important for that means that they actually take it to heart you know so mm-hmm. you, you still you can still call them you can still reach out to them you can because ha, this is serious <laughs> okay so um so they should attest to your academic abilities um do mm-hmm. they need to talk about extracurricular activities or or just treat yeah. academics well, it's, it's really up to them, actually. Okay. If they have an idea of the kind of things you were involved in, then it would be great for them to actually pen something about that, that. Oh, he or she was involved in this and that and is passionate about so and so. And I think her course really goes well in line with what she has already done so far. So that's what it comes to about, you know, your referee actually knowing the kind of person that you are, knowing what you have been involved in, or at least you telling them that, ah, I've done this, I've done this, I've done that too, so that they know. I'm sure you have to send in your CV to your referee also, so that they know exactly what you're about in the first place. Then they have to, usually they ask for your ranking in your class. Okay. It's possible that they don't what if know. you don't know <laughs> exactly you <get>. exactly <laughs> you might not even know so your <laughs> referee can you know 
based on what they feel, based on what they know about the general, um, what obtains in your own school, they can say, okay, yeah, it should be top 5% of your class, top 2%, top, in fact, you could, if you graduated top of your class, then you yeah, top 1%, basically. So, the it's, best graduation, yeah. exactly. So it's based on what they feel at this point, except if there's an official class ranking, then they can just, you know, refer to that and use that to answer the questions. So they talk about your capabilities, your ranking, and if you're a good fit for the course that you're applying to. So it's very important to choose a course that is in line with what you're doing or what you've done so far. And if it's not in line, then explain why it is out of line with what you're doing. Okay. Thank you. So I'm checking um, the road sites. Um, yes. I'm, I, I, the, the, from what I'm seeing, I'm seeing eligibility, then choice of Oxford course. Is that something they used to receive people or it's just part of the entire application? Is that something that it's, it's a process on its own or it's just one application and then you explain everything? I'm just trying to understand. Yeah, it's, it's a single application. You start by selecting what constituency you're from, of which for us on this chart, most likely to be West Africa. Mm -hmm. Then your bio data, your name and the rest. And then you now go on to talk about or to pick the course that you're interested in. There's a drop down list where you, you now go through the courses of which you must have already gone to the university website known what you're interested in and confirm that it is actually one of the courses that are eligible for the road scholarship in this scholarship do you apply for the university first or the scholarship first or the scholarship first that's why it usually starts so early because okay. it opens in june and closes in september so the university applications usually open around december sometimes late november so by the time the university applications open the road scholar has already been selected usually wow. yes so what if you don't get admission to the oxford <laughs> <laughs> these are issues make it, make these sense. are serious issues <laughs> ah. <laughs> because after getting it you still have to apply to oxford wow but, they do like any recommendation for you to oxford like okay this person okay. on roads actually when you have when you're on your student portal there's a place you select if you're a road scholar Oh. or not uh -huh. so your application already says root scholar on the top of it so i think that of course that gives you a shoe that puts you a like ahead basically i believe <laughs> anyway. <That's scary. laughs> but it's, it's unlikely that you would win the road scholarship and then not get university admission because yeah. i mean the criteria are already very strict for becoming you know eligible to apply and all of that so it's more likely that you would still get your admission if you don't get it then something serious must have happened village people <laughs> they must have won <laughs> so i like to talk about the personal statement um oh, i don't okay. know whether um roads people writing lots of essays or it's just one statement mm -hmm. it's uh, just one statement yes okay. so how long is the statement supposed to be it's a maximum of a thousand words wow okay so what um what's the question for the statement what do they want people to talk about in the statement you know what i i think the root scholarship personal statement is one of the ones where you're allowed to be creative there's no topic you're just allowed to wow. talk you're just allowed to speak to what you like what you want basically some people have topic some people say they start with a poem you know recite something abstract and then i'll bring you back in like you can recite to wax poetic for, <laughs> for whichever whatever you like you can do you can be very creative with your personal statement as long as you are not overshooting your word limit but for me i decided to tell it as a form of story almost like building up to you know what i what i am all about and even um in the information for candidates they talk about the personal statement being about who you are and what matters to you and what changes you hope to make in the world so it's up to you to interpret that whatever way you want you can start with oh this and this happened to me and this is what inspired me to study so and so course this is what inspired me to do these things that i have done so far 
And with this experience and with this, my personal academic leadership experiences, this is what I want to do next. I know the Road Scholarship will help me get to this particular point yeah. and help me achieve so and so and so. That's the route I decided to take. But That's people happy, have yeah. done, people have done, they have gone different ways. It's up to you to tell your story the way you feel is best and the way yeah, that resonates well, with what you. Is best? Okay, so I know that there are possibly different ways to tell it, but like, um, what, um, what specific topics now i'm not saying oh like oh you must say you are a doctor you must say you're a writer but what specific aspect of yourself must be included from what you are saying it seems like you're saying that we should talk about their experience their career goals um how roads is going to help them i'm just trying to be sure that i have it clear so like what things do you think that as much as we want to be creative it's oh, it's important to have these things in the statement to really boost yourself because i'm sure you've spoken to like other roots colors and all of that oh yes definitely i i spoke with well i spoke with a runner up actually my classmate shagwa father on me was, is, a was, was a runner up yes in oh. 2020 or for the 2020 road scholarship so i spoke with him at length i mean i pestered him i stra- i squeezed his neck like as much as possible i spoke with him and it was basically just him actually i didn't even get to speak with um, any other road scholar at that point in time but do you runner up get say, anything though do they get like <laughs> the runners up um what what i would say gives you as a finalist generally is that you have more advantage becoming a roads finalist in itself is a big deal and if you have that in your cv that also gives you some form of um, mm. advantage a couple of finalists too that applied to the university of oxford got admission as well so it gives you funding opportunities it gives you advantage when it comes to actually applying to the course you want exactly so he even got a scholarship actually eventually wow. got another fully funded scholarship too so it's in itself applying to it and you know even if you don't win you can be rest assured that you would still get to the end point where you want to get to the university of oxford you will still be able to get there just need to persevere and keep at it so um going back to the yeah <laughs> to the personal statement itself yes um what i described earlier was my own thing it's a personal statement so you're not even allowed to share with anybody that's another part yeah. of it you are not allowed to show anybody. You are not allowed to ask for advice. Just face it and do it by yourself. That's that's basically what we want from Road Scholarship. So you have to become a script writer at some point. You have to tap into your inner writer, your inner creative person, in order to portray what you are trying to portray. And like I said, that can be in so many different forms. I feel like some people might even write songs. I don't even have access to anybody, <laughs> anybody else's personal statement apart from mine. So I don't even know what people write. I really don't know. From my interactions with other finalists, I could tell that you know they're also very creative people and they must have gone about it in whatever ways they like. You could decide to be very professional and just stick with, you know, this is what I did, that is what I did. But I feel like that might not exactly. So for your application to stand out, exactly, you need to make it a little bit more personal. You need to reach into exactly show them that you're a human being. You're not just oh doing this, doing that. You know, adding this to your CV. You're not robotic. I feel personal storytelling. Exactly, so that people get to know you you know more from just reading your personal statements they get to understand where you're coming from and why you are so passionate about this particular thing so yes yeah, speak speak in my opinion speak about personal experiences before you talk about you know why your academics um went the way they did because they have access to your transcripts they can see your cv they have have everything they need to know about your accomplishments everything is there so you now need to you're not basically um lifting from your cv and telling like they already have that information so the personal statement is your time to personalize it tell them why you did the things you did what really drives you and 
pray and hope that you know they see things the way you see it. You're basically convincing them of what you're already convinced about. That's that's my own opinion about a personal statement. Okay, um, just to add to what she said, I just feel like um from speaking to a lot of scholars, I feel like one thing that really help everybody stand out is if you're not trying to follow a template, which is why I like the fact that she's not trying to be too specific on a strategy, because if you follow a template, chances are a lot of people are going to write exactly like that. But if you make it your own, so you think about your reasons, like there are different reasons. Some people choose to study, um, there was someone that was a traveling scholar though, but not rules, but the person wanted to study something about poverty and development. and. He has actually experienced firsthand what poverty is. Do you understand? And that inspired him to go on a journey, a transformative journey. Some people, like, I just feel like when your story feels personal, when it doesn't feel like, oh, you read it off a website and you're trying to follow a strategy, I feel like it's going to be a little um, refreshing for them. So, like she said, you just need to ensure that I feel like, obviously, you don't want to just talk about your life without having a clear structure. You still want to let them know why you want to roots. You still want to find a way to impute your future goals inside. You still want to contextualize everything you have done in a way that people will, okay, this is what this person is doing. But also be creative as well. And you don't want to bore them because I'm sure they are reading a lot of amazing applications. So you need to carry it to the next level. So there's a question here before we move forward. Um, she says, is it top masters or an MPhil? Oh, okay. So it's depends on you the road scholarship covers for a minimum of two years of postgraduate study and a maximum of three years so you can decide to do two masters or you can decide wow. to go for exactly you can decide to go for a an m field a d field a so phd cool. whatever it is exactly so you can get so, a phd yes you can get a d field with the road scholarship yes so masters taught masters MPhil, whichever one you decide, it will cover it as long as it's a minimum of two years or maximum of three. And even if you decide to do a DPhil, and you know, DPhils can cover between three and four years. So if you end up choosing a DPhil and roads covers for the first three years, usually you can still get funding from your department for the last year of your DPhil. So if you decide to do a master's and do a PhD, we decide to do okay. a, two masters, whichever one you decide, just know that if you get the scholarship, you'll be covered. Okay. Hope you heard that. So um, on the application form, aside from the personal statement, transcript and reference mm-hmm. letter, what else are people required to fill? Okay, I think that would have to do with your birth certificate. Okay. So just I don't remember which other things. Yes, just documents. Did no. they ask for your CV as well? Yes, you have to drop a copy of your CV, your personal you statement as well. Yeah, strategy for CV. Like, what do you think people should include in their CV for the road scholarship? Mm-hmm. Ah, we have to ask. The, <laughs> no, do, do you know? Do you know? The, do you know the funny thing is that they are so specific. Mm. They are so, so specific in everything they want. They even practically give you the sections that they want to see in your CV. They tell okay. you, talk about your educational background, your prizes, your prizes, previous prizes and scholarships that you've had, your leadership experiences, professional backgrounds, if you have like paid work or paid internships, and then your volunteering and leadership experiences. So the format is even there so that you know exactly how to group your different um, CV categories. So it's very open you can decide to you know start with your education and then move on to those different aspects but they already know what they're looking for so i guess to make it easier for them to compare different cvs so they have the format already okay so um so as in the application process in itself your personal statements your cv and all your mm-hmm. documents do you think there's anything that makes them choose somebody over somebody else I know you have spoken to scholars. <laughs> and you've spoken yeah. to road scholars. You've seen something that is recurrent. Like, what would you say are like common characteristics? Because before we get into the other stages, because obviously this is going to be the first stage. Everybody wants to be able to cross over to the other stage. And I'm sure that there has to be something in this stage that people need to do to give them an edge. There was someone I was speaking to um for another scholarship. It was like, oh yeah, beyond the essays, um, 
paper publication achievements also help so i don't know about this one but like you have to tell us something before we go to the other stage like what do you think people should do at this application stage that would help them to or not help them because obviously you, have, you can't tell them that 100 percent this is it but can it greatly improve their chances of moving to the next stage well if you ask me now no i i <laughs> as you're asking me now okay. i i i don't know that's the truth i actually don't know i still think about it sometimes i just wonder like what did they actually see what was what was the difference it's not they didn't tell me nobody told me that oh this is what we saw and this is why your application made it past the general pool they didn't they, i was not i was not privy to that information but personally I think that the quality of your personal statement is very important because I noticed that during subsequent interviews, they kept on referring to statements that I had made in my personal statement. Wow. Right? They kept on referring that, oh, in your personal statement, you said so and so, you mentioned this. Why did you decide to do this? What was yeah. your inspiration? So they actually look through that personal statement. They pick mm -hmm. at it like, okay, why did she do because this one? Was what was the reason? Yeah. So I noticed that, and then your references, they also made quite some, uh, they made references to the references <laughs> a couple of times. Like, okay, we, we liked this and that about your references. So it was obvious to me that those were things that they really paid attention to, what other people have to say about you and what you have to say about your own self. Like your CV is general, everybody would have a glowing CV, but when it comes down to expressing yourself and looking at how other people see you because you don't see the reference letters your referees have to submit it directly to the roads um, website so it has to do with the perception of other people about you and the way you yourself see your own self i think those are two strongest points your personal statement and your references do you think that people should hype up themselves or people should be humble because there's always this debate on scholarship essays. People are like, this is not the time to be humble. Hype yourself. And people are like, eh, don't hype yourself. Oh, before they think you are bragging. So for you, for Rhodes, because I know scholarships are different. Were you humble or did you hype yourself in your personal statements? <laughs> My personal statement was, was the way, the adjective I would use is that it was truthful. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't say that I was not, I was not <laughs> humble. I was just truthful. <laughs> if if the truth <laughs> if the truth looks like bragging or if the truth looks like you being humble that's up to interpretation what you feel is humble someone might look at you and be like oh she's so proud it really doesn't yeah. matter just just be yourself, yourself. say your own truth yeah, exactly yourself. speak your own truth don't exaggerate things yeah. say things don't the lie. way they were don't lie Small speak word. the truth if you have to lie to get something that you know that it's mm. most likely not going to last and you will get you will even get caught <laughs> because you cannot back it up even when they keep they asking keep you things about it things yeah so don't even lie exactly so they keep they refer to these things they ask you and if you have not been truthful it would show it would actually show so i would say just tell your truth say the things that really matter to you because when i wanted to write this personal statement it was one of the things that really caused me a lot of stress apart from references of course i had to you know almost sit down and be looking and be looking at the high heavens and looking for like what really matters to me what am i actually all about why am i applying for this scholarship because it takes somebody that has understood what exactly it is they want for you to be able to communicate that successfully so it took a lot of self you know reflection and introspection for me to come out with that personal statement it was something that was stressful <laughs> emotionally mentally mentally stressful i had to really think deeply so if you can start doing that from now it doesn't have to be something that slaps you in the face with some inspiration it takes time so you can start thinking about it you know what are the experiences that i have had me that i love mental health so much I realized that, okay, it had a lot to do with my childhood and the way I was raised and the things that I saw growing up. I saw that, okay, this is actually why I love mental health. This is why I love psychiatry. And this is why psychiatry was almost easy for me to assimilate and for me to understand. And this is why I joined these particular groups. This is why I did this. Yeah. You have to exactly just like think deeply. Mm -hmm. Relate it to something true to you because 
anyways, we'll still get to the other stage. It's like you can't pretend about something you're passionate mm-hmm. about, like mm-hmm. because you're going to they're going to meet you face to face. And if if you go and say that you're passionate about mental health when you're not, it's going to show. Exactly, it's true. You're passionate about literature and you're not, it's going to show. So if there's no point. Think about what do you care about. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes you might not even know, but when you think about all the things you have been doing, you realize that okay, there's a pattern. Exactly what I care about, and you can mm-hmm. create something out of that, basically. So someone has a question before we move into the next stage of the application. Um, okay. She says that when the applications open, when should, should people look out for applications? Um, okay. And second part of your question, I think she already said that after you get selected, then you apply to Oxford and there's a place you can tell let them know that you're a road scholar which can give you an edge she also wants to know whether the scholarship board will give you feedback on your Oxford application or somebody else will do that for you okay okay so first off the part about you getting feedback on your application the scholarship itself you know when you make it to the short or the long list as the case may be you get an email. I even got a call, actually, got a call and an email. When you get to the final stage, you are also informed by mail, maybe even by a phone call. And then, you know, when you eventually get it, you have the option of reaching out to the roads warden. In fact, they would even reach out to you. They send emails. That's the basically the person in charge of the roads trust globally. So they reach out to you and they help you with your application as well. They give you tips. They tell you, okay, this is how you go about it. They explain, if you have any questions, you are free to reach out to the warden of Roots Trust. They are very approachable, very easy to relate with. I, we had video calls with the warden just for her to see us and greet us and congratulate us. So that's how invested they are in their scholars. They won't let you just be, you know, unaware of what What is going on? They will keep you informed every step of all. That's that's goes without saying. Don't need to worry about that. So, what was the first part of the question? When does application open? Okay, applications open first of June of every year. And at when least. they close? Okay. They close September last year. Closed September fifteen, actually. So middle of the month or September thirty, depending. So it's up to you know the discretion of the committee so june 1st opens usually and then you can wait for when they will tell you the closing dates they usually publish them at the same time and that could vary so june 1st just keep all body parts open for that information body part. <laughs> so once you submit the application what is the next step that happens you now wait you wait prayerfully until you get that call me, um, I, I applied, I think I even submitted my application on the last day. One of my references didn't submit until maybe 11.30 p.m. before the thing closed by 12 a.m. So, <laughs> so yeah, it was very interesting. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, so then I just, you know, submitted my application and waited. That was it. You just have to wait. The first call came in, I think it was... December, early December, or was it late November now? I just got the call that, oh, congratulations. I was even sleeping. I just woke up from sleep oh, because I was wait. I had even been dreaming about the scholarship because I was expecting that by now, maybe we should start hearing some information. And I got a call, oh, hello, this is, they didn't even, I don't think I even got to hear the introduction because I was just waking up, like I said. So I even thought it was one of my friends. I was like, oh, damn it, stop joking, stop playing now. <laughs> you said that. Was, I just, I just picked the call. When I heard the person's voice, I assumed it was a friend of mine, damn it. So I was like, oh, damn it, hi, hey. what's going on now? I mean, I didn't even wait for her to, to finish speaking. I was already answering <laughs> When she said, oh, hello, this is so-and-so from Roads West Africa. I was like, (laughs) even though she couldn't see me, I was like, oh my God, what just happened? So (laughs) they fixed another interview at that point. You pick your your time or they would know they'll give you your time for Mm -hmm. your next interview. And my interview was the next day. Oh, was there a first interview? Oh, yes, there was. There was top 45 so they called me you to missed tell me. it now i said the first 
after you submitted your application, mm-hmm. what was the next thing that happened? You did not talk about the first. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I thought you meant what was the next thing I did, which was to wait for the next interview. Oh, no, no. Like, after the first so, application, like, obviously, mm-hmm. the application form, like, what was the next thing in the process? The and next the thing next was a. Okay, okay. Sorry, I, did, I misinterpreted that. Mm-hmm. So, the first or the next stage was a top 45 stage. That was from 2,632 applications, came down to 45. So from the 45, we had another interview with some members of the selection committee. And, you know, they had different groups showing different people. So I got, I think, five different people that I had a Zoom interview with. That was top 45. Then the next two days after that, you had a Zoom interview. um, Yes five interviewees or interviewers no with five committee selection committee members oh. so that's the judges that's the judges i just realized that there are two critical questions that i missed um one person says that the submitting late af- can submitting late affect you like last day of the deadline in getting selected oh well from what you said you submitted late but if you just want to add anything to that that would be cool um then Someone says, how easy is it to make a transition to another field of study different from your undergraduate for the scholarship? So for someone that, like me now, I study history and international relations and in my master's, I'm doing creative enterprise. So for someone that their undergraduates and postgraduate ideologies are different for the Rhodes Scholarship, um, what do you think? Can it affect them or can it help them? That's what the person is literally saying. Thank you. And how can they wiggle their way out of it? So, um, for the first part, like you said, I submitted on the last day. So, I don't believe that that affects your you know, success. I don't even think, I don't think there's any place that they would say, oh, this person submitted on the last day or anything like that. So, just submit it and it goes into the pool of applications where they can review it at a later date. Then, for the second part, the transitioning um, part, I believe that that's where you're personal statements can help you convince them of why you're doing something totally different from your undergrad. It's not it's not um, necessary that you do something that is very related to your undergrad. Do what you think you want. Do what you feel is right for you. So if you decide, like Faith said, to do something extremely different, you just have to convince them that this is yeah. why you're doing it. I think there was there was a finalist that studied petroleum chemistry or petroleum engineering and was doing something that was about renewable energy, which is like opposites. <laughs> and she made it to the finalist stage. She did really great. So it's about you being able to convince the selection committee. I remember her speaking of herself as a living, breathing paradox. That was how she described herself, which is exactly the whole thing. And that is even something totally different, like opposites, basically. And she still made it to the final stage. So I would say, just go ahead, whatever it is you want to do, as long as you can convince them of your choice. Yeah. See? Um, someone says that is attending international conferences as an undergraduate very important in getting the scholarship? I don't think so. Like, why? <laughs> Nobody has. How many people? How many people actually have money to, you know, go for conferences in other places? It's not an easy task, especially if you're a Nigerian spending the Nigerian naira. So, I don't believe that it has any value that would place you above other people. It adds value to you as a person, of course, the things you would learn at the conference. If you bring it out in your personal statement, very great, but don't use that as you know something that you need to aspire to and you must attend conferences or you must publish papers. It's not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think it's part of, of it. There are a lot of questions even here about papers. I don't know if you published papers. Did, did you publish a lot of papers? I, I By the time I was applying, I had, my team and I, we had submitted our research for two different journals. By the time when I was applying, they hadn't been published yet. They had been accepted, but not published. So I didn't make, I didn't even make mention of the fact that they had been submitted. They got published in January and February of this year. So as at the time I was applying, I didn't have any publications. Now I have two. So like I said, 
I don't think those are, you know, things that would put you at the disadvantage says, of everything. Um, how do we go about publishing our, our works on journals? Somebody also said paper publishing process. Seems like people are interested in that. Okay. Okay. Well, personally, <laughs> since I'm a um, medical personnel, when I was a medical student, we had exposure to different types of research work. And, you know, there's even there are classes and courses on how to maximize your potential as a researcher. So I had done, you know, term papers, all those term papers that we keep writing back to back. These are avenues for actually publishing something. You know, I have even friends in junior classes that are still medical students that probably have like five, six publications already. So it doesn't have to be a research work, like, you know, you going into the community and distributing questionnaires. It could be something as simple as an essay. It could be something as simple as a case write-up. It's, it's something that is very broad. And when you reach out to journals that are affiliated with what you are interested in, you get to see what they want, the kind of um, papers that they accept, and how to go about submitting it. Most of them are even free. You can submit it without paying any money. Some of them you do have to pay, but not most of the time. So if you have done different papers, different term papers, different assignments, you can start thinking of how to put them together to make it into a cohesive work. It could be one particular paper that you decide, okay, this is one of my best. And, you know, it's personal to you. This is not something of, you know, copying and pasting from different places. This is something that you have put in work into because they run these papers through plagiarism checkers. So you cannot even, you know, do something that is shoddy. You have to have had you know, a lot of work put into them. So my own papers were community-based studies, one in the University of Ibado for medical students and one in a rural community. So it depends on you. People that I know have published, you know, case write-ups when they see a particular case in um, the hospital and it's interesting or it's a rare condition, they write up on it and get it published either as posters in conferences or as actual in actual journals. So you have a lot of opportunities, but you need to know which opportunities to maximize and when. So all throughout your time in undergrad, you should be looking out for these opportunities and speaking to your um, professors, to your teachers about them. And, you know, they can even help you see opportunities that you haven't seen before because we had supervisors of course and the supervisors also were pushing us to try to publish and all of that so you need to be on the lookout before you can see opportunities to publish so try and make sure that you do that from now till when next you know <laughs> you're applying for a scholarship um benjamin says please what happens when you don't see opportunities related to your course of study well, it depends. What focus of study could that possibly be? Yeah. Benjamin, could you could you tell us your course of study by chance? I'm <laughs> because sure that you, you will find there would always be some sort. It might not be there's always an it depends on what you even consider an opportunity, literally, but there will always be some sort of opportunity. You might just need to mm -hmm. Yes, Benjamin. I'm to Automobile, Automobile education, education. Technology. technology. Well, that, that does not seem like a vague course at all. Yeah. So, like, you would definitely find opportunities. I don't know where you've been searching. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe the portals or the search engines you've been using haven't been bringing them up. So, <laughs> that was a mistake. <laughs> okay, so I believe that, you know, there, there are so many um, scholarship portals. There's scholarship for Africans.com. There is um, opportunities for Africans. Usually, you would be the one to do the work when it comes Wait, is to it saying searching. Opportunities, or are you saying scholarships? Because I think there are scholars. There there's always a scholarship. Like at least I know Chevrolet. You can study anything. You can study anything you want. Know that. And what you're even doing is tech related. There's, there's so scholarship. there scholarships for that because there are a lot of scholarships. It's right. not all, some scholarships are specific. Yeah. So you, for roads now, you might have to check if there's something like that. But some are also general as well. I, I do think that because, and it's even in STEM, so I do think that... You would have loads, loads of opportunities. There will be loads. <laughs> loads and Erasmus loads. as well. There, would, there definitely would be. Like she said, maybe you should subscribe to scholarship portals 
and yeah subscribe to them and keep checking literally you would have to put in work you really do you have to put in work when it comes to finding the course that fits you so you have to always be on the lookout google a lot a whole lot and eventually you would find something that fits or something that you fit into whichever way it's going to be yeah the thing is you check it as specific scholarship and then if you can't find specific because some scholarships specify you check scholarships that allow any course and they will allow you oh yeah his question was what okay oh no 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 no. she said that um publishing papers does not count because she didn't but a lot of questions here were asking about the process to publish a paper because some scholarship it does count so they just wanted to know like the criteria like all scholarships are different literally guys exactly. and so, telling you about from the roads perspective you get so for this scholarship she has talked about that is more about your personal statements more about your references more about academic achievement as opposed to the paper or going to an international conference do you get none of those things are bad if you have it she's not saying don't post so like it's mm-hmm. not like Okay, so let's go. Con- let's continue with the application process. Um, so mm-hmm. the first interview, you said that it was via Zoom, and mm-hmm. there were a group of interviewers. Um, how long was the interview, and um, what was the subject? Was it based on your personal statement and your references, or was it just normal? Comp- was it just a normal competency-based interview? Interview lasted ten minutes. Jeez. Ten. <laughs> What is 10 it? minutes oh. <laughs> 10 minutes to just 10 minutes. make or break basically 10 minutes so he they me. asked me it, it was a blur really i think I, I knew about that the fact that the interview was going to hold the day before so they told you the day before the interview yes they called me that oh you made it to the top 45 yay congratulations your interview is tomorrow by 12 p.m to 12 10 and you will meet with <laughs> you cast it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it was even a week i know some people that had their interviews like they were basically maybe they were rushing home and then they got their call maybe they were not able to make it home in time for their interview but what? they have to you know, just do the interview they understand like it's not like they are uptight people like they are very understanding they are amazing judges so they do understand sometimes situations are peculiar as long as you have 10 minutes to just speak you know they ask you for me they asked me you know what exactly differentiates you as a person from every other applicant to the scholarship wow in me what, what was i even practicing what i had been practicing, <laughs> oh I had been practicing unrelated unrelated questions when they asked me i was like what hmm, hmm. <laughs> i used i used like five seconds to nod my head even though the question was over so like it's varies they can just think someone will just think Wait, of that one was question. the only question Let me ask they you. asked you I think they asked me just two questions wow. um and then your goals post oxford that's that was oh. it it was what differentiates you from every other applicant in this you know in this what? pool of applications and when i answered and talked and thought they said okay what are your goals post oxford when i finished the interview i was just looking that hey god it's over it's all over so it's quite actually <laughs> similar to the question here because someone says yeah. that um let me just check it um did you have any feeling of imperfection in your essays or interview and still get away with it so did you feel like you did not do well in your essay and in your interview and what <laughs> the people that the people that were around me they know they know it's something insecurities are things that i struggle with generally and i'm open about it because i feel everybody should know like i'm not perfect i'm not i wouldn't even call myself a very assertive person right i try i'm trying to work on it i'm working on it but of course when i was applying i was like god please god please help me help my life but i was i was filled with doubt i was like ha am i sure this um, application is okay should i have said more in my personal statement did i write it well enough when i finished the interview i was like what did i just say 
did that even make any sense? Like, what, what did I just, what did I just finish saying now? I'm sure they were not convinced because I felt like I was blabbing. The final interview, you know, at some point, I was feeling like I was, I was not even making sense because they were asking me questions and I would just be blabbing, thinking that, you know, I could yeah, have done better. At, I feel, I feel like they're looking at humanity in all these scholarships. Like, no, I, I feel like, I feel like personally, I, I tend to underestimate myself a lot. I just feel, well, well, you know, I've tried. I don't, I'm not the kind of person that is like, yes, I got this. Oh, I can hype okay. myself, you know, I can hype myself and, you know, go in and kill it. When I come out, I'm like, did I really kill it? I'm the kind of person, I'm working on it, like I said, Me but, too. you know, a lot of people are like, you know, they are ready for it. Anything, they are just like, you know, giving up the points, you know, very good speakers um i think everybody should try and be like that but uh, as a person i'm not like that and i'm not even sure that i can be like that <laughs> because that's not how i'm configured but despite you know the insecurities i have despite the self-doubt and all of that i still push through and that's because of the supportive people i have around me if it was up to me i might not even have submitted that application at the end of the day because i was just i was felt i felt like ah, am i sure this is good enough did i really hit the nail on the head but people were like well submit this application you'll be fine you will do great no matter what just make sure that you submit your application so you need to have people around you that will support you that's just this key it's quite key to my own success anyway so i would say that that was a big part of everything um, Messi is asking about the subject of your response. So um, she says, how did you answer the interview question? <laughs> I feel like we really shouldn't even go into stuff like that, right? Because what I've noticed is that when you are too specific, people tend not to remember the bigger picture. Exactly. When I was asking... I, I did not do that. That's, I could have asked you a follow-up, but I feel like one thing I always do on this platform and... People might not understand it, but I feel like mm-hmm. it's best I explain. She can give you guidance on like the structure or maybe the type of things to say, but in the end, people are different and you don't want to end up sounding like somebody else. Exactly. One thing I don't advise people to do is um, copy people's essays or check people's essays or duplicate people's essays and also people's career plans and people's goals because the truth is it's very competitive and the only thing that can make you stand out is to be like yourself i've had people where they've seen essays and they forgot their own career goals and their own dreams and goals and they tried their best to tailor themselves to be like that person and they ended up losing who they are and who their essence is. So I would advise that you read people's essays. You can get people to guide you, but I, I, I feel like in the end, especially essays and interview answers, you want to be, you want to not lose yourself anyways. But if there's a way you can still find a way to guide the person about it, because I, 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 I'm not sure if you want to give the specific details of your no. and all of that, but at least because you know that question if somebody's asked like what kind of things should they think about so should they talk about um, their talent should they talk about what the work they do like i don't know anything that you can say about that well from what i found out i wasn't the only person that he asked that question and i gave a particular answer which i've not yet said but eh, let's see <laughs> and other people give other answers right and we all made it to the final stage. So I I wouldn't want to actually say my particular answer because I feel no matter how little it is, subliminally, you're still going to be influenced by what I would say. I remember speaking with my friend that I mentioned that was a runner up for the previous year before I applied. And I always just ask him, oh, Shegun, what, what did they ask you in your interview? What did they ask you? And he was always dodging it we like ah like i basically ask him he fires this way he's always dropping up and down he won't answer the question and i'm like what is really going on but afterwards i realized that it was really for my own good not exactly. knowing that oh i should practice this because they didn't even ask me what he was what he what eventually i found out they asked him yourself they didn't even ask me exactly so it's best that you think broadly sure you can you know practice possible questions and try to tailor your answers to fit into you know 
what you've practiced, but you would not hit the nail on the head. That's just the truth. Sometimes you have to learn to be spontaneous because they, they themselves, they know that, oh, the question they throw at you is a strange question. So if you're able to pull through, give a sensible answer and prove to them that, you know, you think on your feet and you're very versatile, then that's a plus for you. As opposed to sounding rehearsed and sounding like you've practiced it, that would not actually give you any point. So let's not discuss the answer I gave in particular. Just learn what works for you and how best to answer questions that you are not prepared for. Well, I would say that in those kind of questions, you don't want to focus too much on, you don't want to say things like, like, oh, I'm special because I graduated with a first class or I'm special mm. because I'm the most active person. I feel like in your, how special you are, you might want to still find a way to relate it to your impact or to relate it to your humanity. So, because that question is very tempting for you to start bragging and listing your achievements. Though, there's oh, a way yeah. you can say those things that they sound inspiring, but I feel like that kind of question, you don't want to come and brag. You want to casually say your achievements, but say it from the lens of, I'm, I'm passionate, I'm, you get what I'm trying to say? Because you want to be careful with, that's not a question like, oh, I've started listening to your achievement, I'm special because, I got it from at some time. I really do. You don't want to do that. You want to. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm just. I'm trying to get you to say something, but not the details. The question, <laughs> like, the question that, like, is: Should it be career? Should they say career? Should they say talent? I'm not saying you should say the exact thing you said, but like. I would. Do, that's my point. I wouldn't even it say you should say this exactly. It can be okay, I, I, I feel you that. Say. The question itself was what differentiates you from every other applicant, every other potential finalist. So if you even think about the question, you cannot say it's because you had the first class. Everybody that applied had the first class. So it doesn't differentiate you from the, the, the next person. Anybody that applied would have some leadership experience. They would have had, you know, they have everybody is different. But when it comes to the criteria, we are all the same. We're all on the same level when it comes to, you know, academic excellence. So that's even that's a no-no. If you start saying that one, it looks like, okay, is that all you have going on? Don't you have any other thing to say? So I would say the personal, right? Mm. The thing that I feel differentiates me from every other person. Different from you. True. Are my personal experiences, right? Nobody has had similar experiences as you have. Exactly. Right? So these are the things that shape us these are the things that confer the kind of personality that we have these are the things that drive us that motivate us so that's that is different for everybody so if you decide to talk about what motivates you then you are good to go not no two people can have the same motivation no two people can have the same aspirations or passions so if you talk about what it is that you are passionate about and why you cannot, they can't have the same answer from another person. They won't see any other person that will give that kind of answer. So if you want to talk about, you know, you graduated with the first class, for my own, the particular question I'm talking about, talking about differentiating you from other people, that would that would not even be a correct answer because every other person also had a first class or a distinction. So it's not even a differentiating factor. It's something that you all have in common at the end of the day. So talk about your motivations, personal. personal experiences, exactly, and your something own passion. Different about you, exactly. And the only way you can actually do something different is something that is you. Something that is... <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. At least we try it. I know, right? You're welcome. I, that I understand where you're coming from because I have actually, I've made a mistake of actually telling somebody exactly what I wrote in something. And I knew this person and it affected the person because the person forgot who they were and what they were doing and just basically became me in another fashion. And you can't you can't get through like that, triggered. You yeah. have the chip holes in your armor, the what you the persona you built will not last because when they keep asking you questions, you can't answer like the exact way faith would answer. You would give responses that might not be very much in line with what you've said. So you have to be yourself. That's just the truth. You have to be yourself. your own self. Literally. Like, so after the interview, um, the 10 minutes interview, did you ask, did they say you should ask them any question or it was bye-bye? It was even 10 minutes. So once it was 10 minutes, they said, oh, thank you. 10 minutes is up. And I'm like, oh, it is. <laughs> that was <Wow>. fast. <laughs> exactly. So we said our goodbyes and that was it. 
and then how long did you wait for the next interview i think it was like two days before i got the email that oh congratulations yeah top 14 you'll be going to ghana for two days yes yes as this as is as like as so as fast you're going to ghana what if you have something to do <laughs> i don't understand i know right i think okay wait i think i had about two weeks to prepare so that means yes okay it must have been sometime in november that we eventually knew that you know top 14 and all of that so you would have had to you know have your international passport it's not at that point that you now start looking for how you get a passport so guys you need you to have, have it actually any scholarship apply once you know that you want to apply for a scholarship please just go and apply for international passport. exactly because some scholarship you just can't get your passport your application just get without it. your passport so let's don't let village people village people must not get anybody in this don't life let them so get <laughs> please if you are interested in scholarship as you are even part of this zoom session if you don't have your international passport please go and get it just go and get it even in my interview it's your passport that is your means of identification it's nothing else so please get it so um you prepared for the so after that one you guys went to ghana fully funded right yeah so cool. and it was i mean hey. <laughs> I, I because, <laughs> wow i know usually, usually i think the interviews have been in lagos so in my mind i was just preparing you know my bags to travel to lagos because i did my housemanship in akt so i was just getting ready to go to lagos and then i got the mail that oh you guys you're all going to ghana and you know fully funded we stayed in a five-star hotel hey. it was hey god oh god <laughs> the thing is if if you go for if you go for something like that actually need to have the best time you don't want to be too close at all for you didn't get to have fun you didn't get to mix with other people and then you eventually you might not even win the scholarship so What's the point? it wasn't easy but you know because you nice be thinking like you're exactly everybody there like <laughs> how did you guys it wasn't easy. making friends and still being like you're competing against each other like well funny enough we did, there were so many activities per day when we when we touched down in Ghana that same day we went out we went out at night we were always busy doing so there wasn't really so much time to you so were they judging you, you guys out. Like, so they were judging you guys in all those interactions I'm just uh, not at all not at all they even stated explicitly that the only time that you know you have been assessed is the dinner the dinner you have um, before the interview where you get to have like you know series of interactions with the different committee members that is different judges wow. and on the interview day so on the first night we all went out to some of the selection committee members were there we had you know drinks we had music of course you still behave yourself not because they said uh, no they are not judging you that you better get on the table and start <laughs> so you better still behave yourself so <laughs> of course compose yourself but be yourself have a good time nobody is judging you and watching ah that one she did not do so and so funny enough elizabeth and i <laughs> elizabeth is the second person yeah. right we were two that won the scholarship the very first day we happened to even get um, the same room we were wow. roommates during wow. the final time <laughs> yeah, yes, right. roommates, so you guys are annoyed <laughs> that is so cool. yes, so it is it was like it was one of the highlights really because she's a great person amazing yeah so the first day we got to ghana and then we had to quickly change i think they gave us 20 minutes to go upstairs change and come back and then elizabeth and i we were busy you know drawing brows you know trying to look good and we were late the bus had left the hotel and was on the main road i'd even gone elizabeth and i were running on the streets of ghana jesus and this was the first day right ah. so if you're talking about them judging that was a good way just judge us and leave us i'm sure you love giving up for yourself like uh <laughs> that failed. when did when when we entered the way you guys not meet up us, with us though we ran after the bus i'm telling you my sister i said we we're running on the streets of ghana like the bus had already gone it was already maybe at a stop sign there happened to be traffic if not they would have they would have left us actually so they had already gone some distance away from the hotel so we had to chase the bus chase it down and then enter and then everybody was just like who are these bus <laughs> no no if we see the ones that they will say let if i just reminded me of myself 
so so if, if it were based on you know the interaction or what they had seen because people kept throwing shade at us like oh hope you guys will not be late this time or, if it was based on that i'm telling you like it was it was actually we two of us had to like look at ourselves and be like babe you need to be serious with your life <laughs> no more going late in fact we will now be the first people to get downstairs wow. once there's something so what we'll be waiting downstairs for everybody like yes yes we're here so we had to you know try and help our own reputation at that point in time so definitely those things did not count either in our favor or against i really don't know but maybe it helped them see that ah these two girls let's let's watch out for them who knows maybe it all played out in our favor in the end of the day but you know at that point we were like wow we messed up we actually came really late for the first event of the entire thing <laughs> so it was destabilizing <laughs> but you know we pushed through we pushed through and so what other like, events that you did you guys do what they were like events daily right yeah daily events we met um a particular big big people you know i feel like they are so well organized especially in west africa they really give you a great experience so that no matter what you know that okay i had a good time i made great friends and i would most likely still get into this oxford that i'm trying to get into so we had interactions with business moguls victor adaje that's a very big businessman in ghana los angeles all over basically different continents and we met with the past president of ghana then president joe you see say you call him president still president john kufo so we met with him you know interacted with him we had different seminars on leadership and you know how to cope with success how to cope with failure how to be more assertive how to speak in public so we actually had different training oh, seminars for you to build yourself you know and also get to meet with people and see exactly what is out there and learn a little bit more so they made sure that we had a fun time we had get together like we had a hangout where we had you know sushi we had so much food so wow. much food. there was i mean they really treated us like first class citizens like we had an amazing time during the whole process such that you don't even like once you look back on it no matter the outcome you still have good memories you still have nostalgic feelings like i had a great time nonetheless so so on the final day was the interview or, yes the so day, what, was, what was the interview like was it long or short as well it was 20 minutes wow. okay. so 20 minutes for the interaction with the whole selection committee that's I think about 10, 10 judges, yeah, 10 members of the community and wait, got wait, to wait. speak with them. <sighs> that was in the dinner, right? Or was no, that in the, the dinner, interview? That's the interview. The dinner... Wait, did you have an interview with 10 people? <laughs> hey, wait, though. I mean, maybe I did not hear when it's like her network has, has paused. Like, is it just me that I had... 10 interviewers. Let me check up on uh, I'm almost done though. Let me just see if Yo. Hmm. this network shall wants to stress us today. Let me check. My network does not want me to be great. I don't know. I'm almost done. So the network, don't worry. Just wait for a few more minutes. We will finish this thing today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um the I'm I am i am I'm trying to be sure that I heard you correctly. So you said there's a dinner where you interact with the judges and then there's an interview where they interview you. So the actual interview, how many judges were there? Ten. I don't understand. So was it like a boardroom setting? Well, yes, actually. It was, it was almost like Just that. you and ten like, people. Wow. Guys. Yes. And some people on the monitor as well. It's people what? that couldn't make it down to Ghana. So... It's no, no. The thing is, thankfully, you've had an interaction with them 
at all points. Oh, that's why they do the dinner. Okay. So to make it less daunting because temp Exactly. I'm just So imagine. you have met them, you have met them at some point. Even before the dinner, we had interacted with them at our previous night out, you know, in an informal setting. So you get to see them, you get to talk with them, they tell you about themselves. You also tell them about, you know, who you are. So when you see them on the interview day, it's not like, oh, I've never seen these people in my life and there are 10 of them right now. So you have some because level of confidence at least because you know them. Because that was very scary when you said that. I'm like, what do you <laughs> but you know, it, it changes. It changes with time. It could be more than 10 at the end of the day for the next year. It could be 20. <laughs> I don't know. Well, the numbers could differ. The numbers could vary over time too. But how was your interview experience like? Were you comfortable this time around? Were you blabbing? Were you, um, were you blabbing? Like, how did you prefer your second interview to the first one? Oh, I, I definitely, I definitely preferred the second because I had enough time, and there were many more questions. You know that that first one was two questions, and you know all your talk is basically to keep you within that ten minutes time frame. But this second one. There were so many questions. I can't even remember most of them at this point because it was like was it a fire for for fire. FBI as well or like um, competency questions? They were competency questions. Oh, okay. Practical application questions, you know, based on the things that you say you're interested in. That's why I was saying that you have to be sure. You have to have, you know, build a portfolio that is in line with it. And even if it isn't, you need to be able to convince them of why it isn't. So you really really have to be convincing you have to you just have to be so these questions are based on you know practical applications of the course you're interested in at least okay. for me that's how it was so wow. they ask you questions based on what you say you're interested in oh what are the ethical issues these were some of the questions that i was getting <laughs> wow. yes percent. you you we just cannot because you would not sell yourself. It would not come off well. It would seem exactly like you said, like you were just blabbing. So you really need to have interest in what you're talking about because they asked me from technology to ethics to um, technology. Research. Yes, they asked me. What course did you study? Science. I know it was something around neuroscience. Um, yes, it's a neuroscience course, clinical and therapeutic neuroscience. So that's that was the course I selected, and those were the things that shaped the kind of questions they were asking me what is the application of neuroscience in the modern world you know how can technology come into psychiatry and then lead to neuroscience it's, it's, your and your it, it, it's, it's based on what you have said you want because they, it was not just about neuroscience really they asked me about government issues in relation to mental health so it's anything it can be anything so you need to read broad read wide know everything that you can possibly know about your interests and it's not just about the course that you're applying to about what you're interested in generally and, said previously. and all that you said look through your personal statements make sure that anything that is there you can explain it to because if you can't explain it it does not look it doesn't look true or it doesn't yeah. sound convincing enough so everything you have written down has to be true and you have to be able to back it up that's that's the, the major thing and of course everything in your cv as well all right so after the interview what is next after the interview a few mm. hours of deliberation and then a few hours they announce the winner yes at each the, candidate at the, at the stuff yes at the same venue where we had the interview at least for me, oh, even the past years, I've seen it's still the same area, the same place where the um, interview holds that they call you guys out and give you a certificate of participation and then announce the winners. Wow. <laughs> okay, wow. So how is you <laughs> now moment? You're excited, I'm sure. So after they um obviously after they announce the winners, so the next thing is you now have to apply to Oxford, right? And you already said they guide you through the application process. Mm -hmm. And obviously, mm -hmm. if you get roads, let's be honest. 
whatever strategies you use for roads, you use for Oxford, right? So no, no, not it's really. It's different. <laughs> hey, 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 yeah, tell us, tell us. So. Okay, so, so the, the for thing Oxford, about for people that want to go to Oxford, because as you are saying it now, I'm really thinking about this Oxford and roads. Do they have them? Right. Um, are they against people that already have previous scholarship for masters? If you want to try, they, they are not against you. They are not against you. No, not at all. Yes. Okay. Yes, so, so for people that want to go to Oxford, tips because I think I'm one of the students. Let me get my pen. Oshé. <laughs> so um, for Oxford, right? Similar documents. It's like you need Oxford. Your... That's like the number one school in the world. Like I really want to learn from this. I'm actually serious. <laughs> No, so, so for Oxford, anyway. you need similar documents. You need your CV, you need your um, personal statement or statement of purpose, as the case may be, and you need your transcript, certificate, all those normal documents, basically. But for a statement of purpose or um, personal statement for an academic entry, it's very different. And I'm saying this in a very serious way, it's so different from the personal statements for roads application because they are more interested in and the academic aspects. And this is now where publications in research that you've done now come into play because you are going in for a postgrad. Okay. Even if it's a taught course, there's a research element of it. You still have to apply what you've learned. So you need to prove that you have experience in research. So that comes to play, and that's quite important. When when I was and applying, who won graduates actually get admission to Oxford? What did you say? Can second class upper graduates get admission to Oxford? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Is that, um, is that it? Won't be easy. Okay. They they generally they generally look for you know everybody is looking for a first class graduate or whatever it might be. But a two-one is good. It's a great, it's a great, it's a great CGPA to apply yeah. to any university. So it should not deter anybody from applying to Oxford. I mean, even for medicine, everybody that doesn't finish with the distinction has finished with a pass. So because it's either fail, pass, distinction at the end of the day. So everybody is in the same pool if you're applying as a doctor or whichever unclassified course it is. So. Then definitely apply to one and also first for class, roads. whatever it is. Two one can also apply. They should try. I've said I've said they should not let anything deter them. I I don't even remember if there is a box for two one in the application. But if there is, then I mean, if it's there, then I definitely apply. Definitely. So, like I was saying, for the statement of purpose, it's more academic than creative. In fact. When when I when I started working on it, I was it was basically writing a new, entirely different SOP. Wow! Almost com- like they are not looking to learn about your personal aspirations or you know the things that you've done in volunteering. Are you serious? They even write it they, for my course. They wrote it there. Please do not write about your personal aspirations. So what's so, that right about for you? But what they are interested in is knowing that you have experience in in research, you have experience in that field that you are going to, and the fact that you can cope with postgraduate activities, you can cope in a postgraduate setting. That's what they are interested in. If there is something personal that pushes you, you know, more in that direction, definitely talk about it. But in my own course, they were even specific. They don't want you talking about, oh, I'm motivated by this. I want to become this. Or they are not interested. They just want to know, this is what I have done. This is what I want to do next. And I am ready for it. Well, because it's even 500 words. So you don't even have the luxury of um, time or the luxury of words to describe in very descriptive terms, like um, in words. So very different and it varies for different courses so based on the kind of course you're applying to if of course if you're applying to let's say creative writing and you're not writing creatively then that's a problem but i'm talking about my particular course where they wanted research they wanted you know can you cope with this course kind of thing and it varies for different courses each course has its own um, 
eligibility criteria and requirements. So it depends. Oh yes, I'm seeing a question about IELTS. IELTS, yes, yes. IELTS, IELTS is actually important. Yes, but it depends. I have some friends that applied for English waivers, in which when you're applying, you to tell Oxford. them that yes, to Oxford, and they got wow. it. So yes, yeah, so you can actually apply for an English waiver, but I wouldn't tell you to depend on an English waiver because usually when you get your admission, it's conditional or unconditional. And conditional being that maybe you haven't fulfilled the English requirements and you were not granted a waiver. So you might be it might be stressful to start running at that point to now do the IELTS exam, seeing as you know you have to confirm your admission at some particular point before the applications will, I mean, before they would stop taking confirmations again. So it would be safer to have written your IELTS before you start applying and have your results. And the requirements usually, depending on your course too, some take a minimum of 6.5 for each of the different categories and overall, nothing less than seven. But some of them take a minimum of seven in each of the categories as well. So it depends on your course. When do you apply for for what for Oxford? Tell me, Is that is that to Oxford? I think so. It should be. Yeah, because there are different. Um, okay, thanks. There, the applications open at different times. Like I said, so you have to keep your eye out as well. Most of them open early in December and close early in January for the first batch. Some of them close in March. But for my own course, it started early December and closed early January. So there was like a one month space. And then for roads, you are required to even submit your application to Oxford a week before it closes. So you have a sh- like three week period to finish up your personal statement and every other thing. But thankfully, what you'll be working on is just your statement of purpose. Since you already have your certificates and transcripts and all the rest. So depending on your course. Some courses have early openings, some have early closures. So it depends on it. There's always more information on the university websites for all the courses. You would see it's very well designed, very easy to navigate. There's another question for you. How many people do they give these awards? Has the number been changing over time or is it still the same? <laughs> this question. <laughs> so do you bring us? <laughs> Thanks for the question. Well, when, when the scholarship restarted in 2017, the first set of winners there were two. And globally was, or in West Africa? That this is West Africa. This is West Africa. Globally, there are 100 scholarships available. Most of them are concentrated in the United States. I think 32 of the 100 are for the United States alone. So all the other scholarships are distributed to different continents, different countries, and West Africa on its own, comprising of 18 countries, for this year had only two winners. So the first time in 2017, there were two winners. After that, it was one winner for like three years, and afterwards, two winners again for this um, particular year. So we're looking at, you know, and this all depends on political will, it depends on sponsorship for that particular constituency. So if there is more sponsorship, if there is more interest in it, then it's very likely that the tally will go up. So please apply. Because by the time they are having 10,000 applications, there would be more motivation that, okay, people are really, really interested in this scholarship. People are well-informed and they are qualified for it. So there'll be more motivation to increase the quota for West Africa because having 18 countries and two people would not be enough. It's, I mean, how I wish everybody that's applied could actually get scholarship, but sadly that's not how it works. So the more people that apply, the more people show interest, the more sponsorship and political will is shown the higher the number of people that could possibly be selected. But as at this year, two winners. What what course did El- is Elizabeth studying? Elizabeth went for a BCL. Can I, I'm not sure I can remember the full meaning of BCL. It was something about corporate law. So, oh, okay, I'm just trying to see the kind of courses that won. 
Okay, yes, it, it all depends on, of course, you've been able to convince them too. So she went for something and she's a but lawyer, so she went for something. Writing or, or music, get the roots scholarship. Oh, we had, we had a priest that was one of the top 14. I'm confused. <laughs> what that is for the theology? Okay? Theology, yes, yes. Wow. Actually, so wow. Like I keep saying, you can't even you can't even keep it in a box. You can't say, oh, lawyers are more likely to win, or petroleum engineers. It's up to the standard of your application. If you're a priest and you want to study theology and your application is amazing and you have won prizes, you have done work, then trust me, you will do just fine. So no box there's no box anybody can apply okay so i'm sure you have um final words so anybody here the, everybody is different we all have different mm-hmm. backgrounds and everybody has different goals and dreams but what would you say to anybody listening to you right now inspired by you and they want to also win the world scholarship what would you say to them in this moment okay hello potential <laughs> applicants <laughs> so i would say that you should not let your background limit you yeah. right rather than let it limit you you should let it inspire you to do better let it inspire you to do more and to improve yourself your family your community and the world in general because that's the whole point of the scholarship it's to inspire people to inspire people to stand up for other people. So if you have come from, you know, maybe your academic background isn't so strong or your financial background, whatever it is, you should let that motivate you to actually do better. Because if you let it you you would never know, you know what you could so it's best that you go for it does not mean you shouldn't try don't let anything start early that's very important and put in the best that you have put in the best because it does pay off and it does speak for itself when it comes down to it oh that's so inspiring like i'm so inspired listening to that <laughs> <laughs> thank you so so much Bully, for your time i know that you have a very busy schedule like we know how we went through to even have a conversation yes. about schedule, i'm just i'm really grateful that you made out this um two hours to speak to potential applicants and i'm sure that they've learned a lot from this to even not just even apply to roads but to many other scholarships i feel like they are recurring themes that they've learned from this and we are very inspired by you. We are very, very, we're just really grateful. So thank you so much for coming. And to everyone that came, thank you so much for asking Thank you. As well. Thank you for hosting me. <laughs> yeah, I'm really grateful that it really helped you guys. Um, I'll be having a YouTube live session this week, a Q&A on scholarship. So you can attend that as well and we can be interacting about things like this. So I've dropped my YouTube link a million times, but I'm just going to do that again. And then <laughs> if you want to reach out to you, follow you on social media, what is your social media platform? I know Instagram is Bella Amaka, I think. Bella, Bella, just hmm, I'm not going to spell it wrong. L-L-E. Let me put it in the chat okay. box here. So this is my Instagram. And then you can, this is also my Twitter, but I don't use Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. Is that your I didn't even find your Twitter. Like, like I was trying to do tag <laughs> I don't really use Twitter. I didn't find it. Don't do that. <laughs> Put your Instagram. It's, it's the same. It's the same one still. That's Are the same on, on Twitter. Mm-hmm. But I don't. I don't do much, so you won't see me there. But this is my Instagram, and then my name. I don't know if you guys can spell it, so I'll just put it in the box still. Um, you can use this for LinkedIn, and I think for Facebook too. So if you guys need to reach out. That's where you can find me. Reach out in case you're interested in roads. She's your plug. But I know that schedule is busy, Sha. I advise that you reach out to her early enough before school starts. Yes. 
because trust me i know what it is please do please do all right guys don't forget to subscribe i can imagine don't forget to subscribe to the channel reach out to her and attend the session and i really wish all of you good luck see one thing is one thing to learn and listen to all this if you don't apply if you don't look out for the opportunities if you don't put in the work it's just stories so don't let all this our hard work this time that shall <laughs> come and help you going to win apply like you're not going to listen. please apply don't be big because i was quite <laughs> worried when you're talking about the number of people that were selected i was like hey god this bush not gonna be <laughs> but like she's a human being she's human like you she's 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 human like she doesn't even feel robotic she feels relatable and if she can do it i believe that you can do it thank you so much guys and see Yay. you guys next time <laughs> Bye.